and hate And I know better than to listen to the people who are calling us names Well, good morning, everyone. My name's Brian, and today is Monday, September 25th, 2023, and this is episode 529 of the Lots Project podcast, where we're defining norms and designing freedom. Today's episode is titled Ways to Stack Bitcoin, Buy It, Earn It, and Even Use It, and it's brought to you by the Blockstream Jade. Today, I'm going to be diving into Bitcoin a little bit more. We uh, talked about it on Friday. The episode generator uh, popped it up again on Monday, so we're going to be talking about it. Um, some ways to uh, to pile on those stacks and uh, ways to buy it, ways to earn it, and uh, sometimes even ways to max grow by spending it. So for that, let's grab a cup of coffee and catch up with what's going on around uh, our area here and anybody in the live audience and uh yeah, we'll get to that topic in just a little bit. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Hunter. How we doing? MSU Rifle, how we doing this morning? Thanks for joining us. Ah, what is in the cup today? I have, this is a um, organic fair trade, very light Colombian. And uh, yeah, it's great. It's great. It's great. I, uh, I double dipped, I think twice this weekend i think twice friday and saturday i had double french presses so a little strung out a little strung out but i have plenty of coffee up in the cupboard so i uh, i've been i've been stretching out my mornings getting some more work done here on the computer and uh, pounding things out so enjoying that premium coffee that's up there in the cupboard every day Good morning norman norman's having a little snack right behind me and i'm randomly eating all the time but anyway colombian in the cup if you want to grab some of that premium air roasted coffee head on over to food forest farms and check it out um what uh what happened this weekend it was a big weekend here it was birthday weekend Corey's birthday weekend was um i think it was a a success i would say she she had a good time she got to relax um MSU Rifle, yeah, Back to the Land was this weekend. Say it went pretty well. That's good. Uh, didn't make it there. We, um, I heard about it after the fact. Same with Kentucky Sustainable Living. I uh, I heard about them after kind of plans were set. Not necessarily in stone. We were going to still be in the area, but we weren't sure. We couldn't commit to doing those things. And then uh, stuff popped up on either side and all around. So we didn't uh, we didn't make a commitment to go to either one of those. Uh, but, um, yeah, I'm glad to hear that went well. I think any time, any time a group of people can get together, uh, that have a common interest, whether it be self-reliance, whether it be homesteading, um, uh, survival skills or, uh, self-reliance skills, anything like that, that bring people together, they can have, a uh, totally, totally opposite views on tons of stuff, but coming together with that one common thread and uh, people can can interact it very well and uh, it, it it makes for a good time for sure so that's why i like self-reliance festival it was uh, a variety of different people i think it was uh nicole sauce one one day when we were there so i think we've been there twice this will be our third time i think it was the second time she was on stage and she was ta talking about the fact that um you know, people from the right and people from the left were all surprised that the others were there. Like, oh, my God, the, the lefties are over there. Well, everybody wants to be a little bit more self-reliant. And I think all of that stuff kind of goes out the window when you are at um, when you're at that um, event with those common bonds. Oh, nice. You got to meet Billy Bond, Carrie Brown, Carrie Brown. If you got to meet Carrie Brown. Carrie's my buddy. I uh, I really enjoy hanging out with Carrie. Uh, Ryan, Steva, nice. Jason from Sustainable uh, Kentucky Sustainable Living. So, several others. Yeah. Um, when when these events, when we have these events, the ex accessibility of the the speakers, of the presenters, of the people that um, have taught you, and we kind of put them on a pedestal sometimes, uh, just because you see them, they're they're present in front of you. You see their their followings and things. 
but the availability of them and when you realize that they're just people doing the same thing you are it's um it's very eye-opening and uh and, and comforting so Blakesley Acres, good morning. Hit that like button, everyone. Yes, yes. Uh, Backwoods isn't here to harass everyone in the comments to hit that like. And um, thanks. I appreciate you picking up his slack. And good morning, Cormac. I see you swinging in there. Uh, was just telling Corey before the show, I get to, I can text Cormac in the morning and um, I can text Cormac and he's around because it's in the middle of the day there. Most of the people that I interact with, a lot of them actually are on the West Coast. So five o'clock here is is really or five between five and six here is really early where they are. And um, yeah, he's uh, he's way far in the other direction. So time is a little different. Hold on one second, folks. I'll be right back with you. Oh, all right. All right. All right. Um, so what do we do for Corey's birthday? Let's uh, let's get back to the weekend. I um, well Friday before that Friday I headed out to Toolman's uh, Delinquent Gully out here in Tennessee. He is going to be on his way here middle of the week, and I'm going to be here for a week. We got some projects we want to work on, some things we want to get going before we have uh, the work day out there prior to SRF. So I took a, a trip out on Friday, spent some time. Um, and things got things got to l- shaken up a little bit with uh, adding on an extra property there. We had when Tim was physically here before Tim and um, Tim and Becky were here. We walked the property. We kind of scoped out some th- some stuff. Corey and I had been out prior, um, and we marked a bunch of areas, and it it, it all made sense. And as um, two things happen two things happened we were out in the spring wasn't spring when we were out um with tim and becky on the property early summer uh everything grew in everything grew in so finding the things you found before even though we marked them on trees we did mark them with yellow tape uh pointer number one if you're out doing uh, landmarking get pink uh <laughs> Get pink, yellow. Uh, when the green, uh, when the green and the foliage come in around yellow tape, it gets really hard to see. I, I've been, um, I've been kind of on top of them, and uh, boom, there it was. So, uh, pink, see it a long ways away. But uh, so stuff grew up. It got, to, it's gotten hard to find uh, the spots we marked. I found most of them eventually, but everything kind of grew in. Um, and a lot of the, a lot of the plants are now taller than me out there where they weren't even knee high in the spring. So definitely a lot of growth going on, but, um, with adding the extra property, it changed, it changed quite a bit. And, um, so I was trying to spend some time out there, get poking around and see if possibly things were going to change in his mind when he comes down. Cause he hasn't been here since the, he picked up the extra land. So, um, Slow going, like t- locating spots, trying to clear some paths, trying to really make sure uh, before I move forward to anything, before I drop a tree or uh, or install anything semi permanent, that uh, that Tim is uh, Tim is comfortable with it with the new setup. So there was that. Made it out there, took a bunch of time, walked around, tried to see tried to see if we had access across the the new slot, the new five acres see if we had access across that onto the old property and and where he wants to be, because I think that the, the vehicle access is going to be on the new spot. And uh, I think I've mentioned that before, but so it kind of throws a little, little curveball and things and we'll see Tim's going to be down here, like I said, this week and, um, and we'll get out there and spend a bunch of time and, and get things rolling and uh, get everything figured out for work day, the Thursday before SRF. So I came home with that, and uh, then it was Corey's birthday. It was time to focus on her for the rest of the weekend and um, and pay attention and um, and just dedicate that time to her. I'm not going to tell you which day was her birthday. We'll keep that a surprise. <laughs> but uh, good morning, good morning, Pip. Uh, happy Monday to you also. And so we um, we basically kind of just spent the weekend together. We did make a uh, a run to Jackson, Tennessee which is about uh, oh, about an hour from here, I suppose. And uh, Corey and I, when we were on vacation, started playing uh, cornhole or bags or whatever you, whatever you want to call it uh, with our parents. They had picked up a, um, a 
full size, not the not the travel kid size uh, version of bags, but uh, the full size four by two um, four by two targets, I guess is what they'd be called. Uh, and we really enjoyed it. We 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 enjoyed playing with her parents. And then when we got back, we we're like, you know, it'd be really nice to just go out in the evening and uh, play some throw some bags back and forth. We used to play horseshoes at the cabin and things like that just to just spend time together because we don't watch TV and uh, you get you get sick of all the movies that are on Amazon. You can only watch them so many times. But so we uh, we we took a trip up to Jackson for her birthday and she wanted to get some uh, she wanted to get a set of bags. So we found the closest store that would have had them in stock because we didn't feel like shipping. And we drove up there, took a nice day, spent the spent the morning together, went shopping at uh, Dick's Sporting Goods, and then uh, hit some lunch on the way home. That was good. We uh, we got home and uh, man, we played bags. We played bags for the majority of the weekend. Besides taking the dogs, keeping the dogs walked, and just spending time together. But uh, it was nice. It was relaxing, and I enjoyed it. And um, yeah, it. Uh, it I guess it couldn't have been much better than uh, just hanging out with her on her birthday and, and uh, seeing how things seeing how things played out. Good morning, Philippine Nomad. How we doing? Popping in and uh, thanks for uh, always always saying saying what's up to the community. Oh, 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 oh. yeah, that was Friday night, wasn't it? <laughs> I forgot. Guys, we found pizza. We found we found legit pizza. Here, I even have it right here. Right here, you can see it if you're watching the crowd. Oh, you're not going to be able to see it. It's going to be so bright on there. Oh, man. Charlie's Pizza here uh, close to us. Uh, turns out it's only 17 minutes sometimes away from us. Sometimes it's actually three minutes from us. There's a food truck. Charlie's New York style pizza. It's a food truck that uh, is in this local area. We saw them the other more or uh, last weekend when they had the little town festival. That fly is really nice flying right in front of the screen. <laughs> so distracting. Um, anyway, we saw them when we had town festival here uh, the weekend before, and uh, we had already eaten because they showed up later than we had thought. And we, um, we grabbed the menu. We we scoped them out. We found them on Facebook, and they were going to be in their spot. So the way they work with their food truck is they um, they park in the same spot. Was it four days a week? I think four days a week they park in the same spot, and then two days a week they travel to the same place each. Uh, the same place two days a week, and then they rotate those two days um, week to week to week. And so we found when they were going to be in their, their spot, they were like uh, 15 minutes from us. And so we drove out there. The pictures looked great. Everything looked legit. Uh, we pull up, we order it. And I'm like, mm, it's a food truck. Like how, man, it's not a pizzeria. How's, how's this going to go? So they make it right there. She said that they were extremely, um, they weren't, they weren't, um, they weren't busy because there was a barbecue festival going on uh, uh, a few miles away. And she's like, we're usually stacked. We usually have tickets all the way across. And there was nobody there. And I was like, oh, okay, well, what a great day to go get pizza. We get to not wait in line and find out if it's worth waiting in line. So we ordered it. We ordered these garlic knots and some uh, some pizza. Pizza looked good in the pictures. It looked good um, from everything I could tell on Facebook. And so we waited, we went and we sat in the truck. There's no tables, there's no uh, picnic tables, there's no anything. It's, it's, I think people usually take it to go. <coughs> Hot tip, if you have a full-size pickup truck, uh, normally if you flip down the center console, a pizza box will fit on it uh, and you can, you can use it as a table. I've done it more than once, it's, it's pretty good. Anyway, um, wait for the pizza, garlic knocks come out, we're eating them and uh, I'm going over to wait for the pizza standing there talking to the two employees because there was no other customers there. And I hear the guy talking about talking to the, the his coworker in there about um, the vents on the side of the pizza oven. 
Now I had a lot of friends that worked at pizzerias in this, in the town. Like it was a place where kids got high school job delivering pizzas. They learned to make pizzas and places made legit stuff. And that was the big thing they always talked about was adjusting the vents on the side of the pizza oven to cook it properly. The bottom gets cooked. Um, the bottom gets cooked by the heat coming off the, off the bottom of the oven, the stone, and then the vents control the airflow on the top and how quickly the top crisp up. And so I hear this guy saying, Hey, the stone's nice and hot right now, but I need to really adjust these vents because it's not cooking the top. And I'm like, okay, this is might be good. This might be good. It came out, guys. Sauce wasn't sweet. That was the first thing that was messed up around here was all the pizza sauce was sweet. Um, the sauce was good. Uh, the cheese was good. The crust was fantastic. They knew what they were talking about. I think uh, if it was busy, it would have been even better. Just um, I think that the, the oven wasn't quite ready to roll. Uh, you need to get it really hot and have it uh, have a bunch of pizzas in there to have it working. Like it needs to be working to work the best. So I'm excited. I'm excited. And um, turns out that uh, this week, actually two days, there'll be a couple miles from here down the road. So pizza, we found pizza finally. My work here is done. We can move on to a new area and um, mission accomplished. <laughs> so anyway, we'll have uh, we'll be in we'll fl be flush in with pizza until we uh, leave the area. But I guess the guy's only been open since April of 2023. So it's only been going for what uh, was that five months now? It's when we got here. <laughs> Corey's like, why haven't we found these? I guess we gave him time to get better at what he's doing. But, uh, man, definitely bravo to Charlie's uh, pizza wagon. I guess it's not a food truck. It's in, like, a, a trailer, in an enclosed trailer that he pulls around with a truck. So if you're in the if you're in the local area and you're looking for pizza that uh, is good, check out Charlie's. Charlie's Pizza. You can find him on Facebook and all that stuff. So anyway, that uh, Corey brought that up right at the end. <laughs> but I, I had to talk about it. It was uh, It's been something that we've. We've been dying to find since we since we took off and um, every place we go, we try to find some decent stuff and we finally did. So let's uh, let's move on to that. Let's uh, wrap up the, the coffee chat and get into the topic of the day, which is going to be Bitcoin. Uh, ended up being back to back uh, uh, morning. K Bonk, how we doing? Ended up being Friday and Monday, just the way the, the random rolls went with the, the topic list. But anyway. Uh, every day, because of the topic list, I'd like to bring you products and services related to the topic that uh, that when you purchase or use these things, it helps support us. If you're looking for a hardware wallet that prioritizes security and convenience, the Blockstream Jade is your answer. It's compact, user-friendly, and designed for optimal security of your Bitcoin assets. Available at 10% discount when you use the, the coupon code the lots project all one word the lots project and use that link in the video notes or the audio notes don't miss this opportunity to grab 10 percent off a block stream jade and if you have any issues with it problems with it let me know and uh, i will help you walk through it for sure link is in the video notes and the and the audio notes along with that discount code so check it out today they are very definitely affordable, um, affordable option when it comes to Bitcoin hardware wallets. So today we are talking about um, today we are talking about Bitcoin. Uh, we we were talking on Friday about Lightning Network and how it changes everything. How it's really I think going to be the catalyst to Bitcoin adoption. I think even when people won't even know they're using and already um, a lot of backbones, uh, financial backbones are running on this technology and you don't even know it. Like it goes into the system as dollars and all the the all the back end transferring, everything happens in lightning and it is processed on the other end as dollars. So. There's a possibility your payment networks are using this already and you don't even know. So uh, that's how powerful it is. That's how much it changes. It changes the the validity, I think, of Bitcoin to where now it does everything it needs to. Uh, with this layer on top of it, it does everything it needs to. It made it cheap and it made it fast. 
Uh, those were the two hangups on Bitcoin. So anyway, we'll get away from that today. I wanted to talk about if you are interested in Bitcoin, if you are starting out or you have already figured out how to buy it or um, are holding a little bit and you want to increase those stacks, this will be every from everybody that has nothing that is looking to get started. Where can I buy it? Where can I get it? Where can I earn it? Um, and we'll just kind of move through a bunch of those of those places. I'm going to talk about touch on them a little bit, and then uh, we'll wrap up after the list goes by. But first, I want to talk about buying it, buying Bitcoin. You don't have any. You say, I want to get into Bitcoin. I want to give it a try. I want to buy some. I want to spend my U.S. dollars to buy Bitcoin. One thing you're going to do, one thing you're going to have to do is called KYC. It's it's called it's KYC is know your customer. There are laws that were put in place by our, our wonderful government to stop the terrorists, to stop um, money laundering, to stop whatever, whatever they wanted to do. Basically, they wanted to know what you were doing, what assets you were buying. <coughs> they didn't want anonymous transactions of uh, things that are going to end up holding value. And you can really tell, I think, a, a telling sign of, of the importance of Bitcoin is how much uh, the government has paid attention to it, how much they ignored it, how much they uh, downplayed it, and now how much they're trying to regulate it really tells you the strength and that they realize that, that it's um, the strength going forward. Otherwise, they wouldn't care. They wouldn't care. They wouldn't. They wouldn't. Um, they wouldn't put up a fuss about it if it was just going to go away. But I think that that uh, smarter people than me and uh, have realized and figured out that uh, it is going to go forward. It's going to be around for the long term, and so we better get a handle on it now. We better regulate it. We better. Um, we better. We better get a hold of what's going on. Um, the biggest way they're going to do that is when you can convert. Their biggest pinch point, the easiest place for the people that want to regulate this to regulate it is when you're converting from their currency to Bitcoin and from Bitcoin back to their currency. So your on ramps from fiat and your off ramps back into fiat are the pinch points. Beyond that, there are are um, plenty of ways to move about anonymously with Bitcoin. Um, but getting into it from fiat, getting out of it from fiat, fiat are, or out of it into fiat are the, the sticky points where it's just easiest. It's easiest to do jump through the hoops. Um, it's, it's not horrible. It, people freak out about it. It is basically basically verifying who you are it is i mean it's ba that's all kyc is know your customer uh, a lot of places basically take a picture of your driver's license and yourself and verify that it's you um it's 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 to make sure the terrorists aren't using things for bad bad things so um don't worry quite about that uh, quite a bit about that don't uh, don't sweat it that you have to put your information in it is not someone trying to scam you. It is it is legit what you have to do to use a lot of these services. Uh, basically, any up and up service, you're going to have to do it at this point. Uh, I can't think of one. Maybe maybe somebody in the crowd that uh, that uses uh, a lot of them can come up with some. But uh, I, I easy on ramp, easy dollars to Bitcoin um, is is basically you're going to go through KYC. Some of those some of those places that I've found easiest, um, I pulled the crowd because I basically have changed my um, strategy with stacking sats. When we went on the road, when uh, we went down to one income, uh, it didn't make sense to take a lot of our fiat and buy directly into Bitcoin. I'm doing, I'll, I'll speak to some stuff in a little while that we're doing to earn it with our fiat. Uh, but buying regularly, buying DCA, you'll hear that term, dollar cost averaging is uh, is a strategy to buy Bitcoin, uh, buy it every week on a schedule, 
every month on a schedule, regardless of price. Um, and it will all add up in the end, trying not to play the price dips and swings. Anyway, anyway, a lot of these services will, will you can set that up. It will automatically do that for you. But anyway, we have kind of changed that. I've changed my strategy on how to build my stacks. They're going slower. Nah, nah, in some cases, yes. Some cases, no. But uh, that's just the situation for us at the moment. Uh, but buying it with fiat. The, the easiest place, the, the place that I got the most reaction, the, the quickest, the quickest um, way to buy it would be if you're using Cash App already or um, Robinhood. Robinhood was another one that as long as you've done your KYC with them, it's basically um, like using the cash part of it. Uh, your bank, if you've used Cash App, basically it links your bank card and makes you able to make digital payments. Uh, base in, and receive, give or uh, make, send and receive digital payments. Basically, you could use that money in your account to buy Bitcoin. And as long as you do go through the hoops of verifying who you are, you can send that off to your own wallet, which I which I uh, recommend for sure. We talked a few weeks ago about Bitcoin wallets, uh, software wallets, hardware wallets, paper wallets. Uh, I would suggest getting it off Cash App and putting it in at, at minimum a software wallet. Technically, um, technically, Cash App holds it in a software wallet, but if you listen to that episode, I talked about custodial and non-custodial, and you don't own your Bitcoin when it's in the Cash App app. You have access to it, you claim the rights to it, but they they control it. Kind of like the bank account when, you're, when your money is in the bank, it, um, it is kind of on their, it's in their control. You have a, a ledger mark that says you have that, but it they can do what they want with it in the meantime. So Cash App is a super easy place to buy it with fiat, to buy Bitcoin. Um, maybe keep some in there depending on, on your purposes with Bitcoin. I, I try to transact in it um, a little bit. I try to uh, stack a little bit. And my MO is I'm building my pile, but I'm also trying to, to spur adoption. If somebody's willing to, to, to sell their products in Bitcoin, buying them helps strengthen that, that economy, strengthen that ecosystem of Bitcoin and helps it become adopted. So I don't think we can only stack Bitcoin, I think it needs to be used to to be accepted, um, mass accepted. So it's a balancing game, man. Would I love to just pigeonhole it away, stack every sat I get away, and uh, just pile it up? Yeah, but I understand that we need to use it also to make it functional. So maybe keep a little Bitcoin in your in your Cash App Bitcoin wallet um, to to send to people. It's not hard to to get it from a software wallet to move it move it on. Um, yeah. Okay. K Box says learn about the FTX scam and how they used people's money. Yes, exchanges. Um, this isn't really. This isn't. That's another thing on my list, and I'll kind of hit with it there. K Bonk is um, so Cash App, Robinhood is another app. The the stock investing app. They they also have a Bitcoin feature where you can take um, some of your investing money and buy Bitcoin. Again, uh, you need to do KYC to take that off of there. I think you can play with it inside the app uh, without doing KYC. I think you can buy and sell it in the app, uh, but to take it out of the app, to take it into your own custody, you have to do KYC. Uh, not a big deal. Uh, so Robinhood, K or uh, Cash App, Strike is another uh, way, uh, another app to buy Bitcoin. Um, Strike, <coughs> Strike works the same way, except it. I don't. I haven't used Strike a lot, so I had issues with Strike, and that's a, that's something I have to say about all these these services is find the one that works for you. I know K Bonk is a big fan of Strike. Um, he's had very little problems with it, or, uh, as, as, as far as I knew, um, the last, uh, last I knew he had, uh, very few problems with it. I had some issues with it. Like, um, they wouldn't, 
they wouldn't up um, the amount of money I could transfer in. There was like all this weird stuff and um, customer service was kind of lacking when I tried. Uh, but I've also talked to people that have had great success with it and actually love it. So kind of poke around, see what works for you. That's why I, I led with Cash App is it's 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 um it's more accepted and popular um for the cash side of it, for the fiat side of it, for the payment, uh, ease of payment. And they added on crypto later. Strike has been crypto centric from the beginning. So unless you were into Bitcoin, you weren't exploring it at all. Um, but strike uh, is another is another option to go from fiat to to um, to Bitcoin. Uh, strike I know has features to do direct deposit. Uh, you can take part of your uh, paycheck and have that directly deposited into Bitcoin, uh, and then move that on to your wallet. Uh, that would be a way to do the DCA that I was talking about earlier. That dollar cost averaging that that scheduled payment or that scheduled purchase of Bitcoin every time over and over and over. Uh, just like when you, you know, the old school, when you got your paycheck and uh, when they first came out with direct deposit and they were like, okay, now you can split your direct deposit into two bank accounts, into your checking account and into your savings account. You can put 10% in your savings account right out of your check. You never see it. We can do that with Bitcoin um, through Strike and possibly Cash App too. At this point, Strike I know for sure you can you can literally use the routing number and checking account number in your app to set up um, direct deposit every every paycheck. So there is that. That's a that's an easy way to buy Bitcoin. Um, another. Let me see on my list here. Um, the Coinbase. If you have to, if you have to, they've been around. It's easy. It's set up for, um, it is set up for buying Bitcoin. It's an exchange. Um, K-Bonk earlier mentioned FTX and the scams they use. Coinbase, I'm not saying they, they run scams or anything, but it's the same setup. Um, when you buy Bitcoin on an exchange, when you buy Bitcoin from Coinbase, or if you had Bitcoin invested in FTX, I believe FTX was more of an investment um, and high return scam, wasn't it, k I, um I never really got into much of that. It wasn't, uh, it was too good to be true, in my opinion, I guess. Um, but if you buy Bitcoin on something like Coinbase, you buy Bitcoin on something like Cash App, Strike, Robinhood. Get it off there as soon as possible. And especially if you're new and you're learning and you're hearing about these for the first time, don't go buy $1,000, please. Don't go say, oh, I'm going to buy $1,000 of Bitcoin and go with it. Please just use a couple dollars, something that makes sense for you, $10, um, something that you know, if you lost it, you'd be like, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> but yeah, it is what it is. It's 10 bucks. Um, try it out. Make sure everything goes through. The process takes a little bit with on chain Bitcoin. It takes a little bit of time uh, for sure. Um, so they take take the steps. Take the time to get familiar with it. Go through smaller transactions that if you lose that, if you make a mistake, it isn't the end of the world. I still double and triple check that I'm doing things right. I've been doing this. I've been playing around with Bitcoin, I think 2017, 2018-ish, pretty consistently um, aware of it for longer than that. Um, so it takes some some time to get comfortable with. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're pretty loosey goosey with your money. I also uh, I also get uh, very nervous when I'm buying large purchases on Amazon with fiat. So um, it, there is there is that. So but just get comfortable with it. Get comfortable with um, how you send things, how you purchase it, the fees. Like if you need X amount of Bitcoin to buy something, if that's your intention, you're like. Hey, my buddy wants to sell me his car, but he only wants it in Bitcoin and I have cash. Um, you can go through this process of buying Bitcoin and sending it to him. Um, the fees, are they worth it? 
if he's going to give you less, figure out all of that. Look at that. It says right there, you can, you can really, really dial in and have almost an exact amount of what it's going to cost you to do this whole process. And yes, there are fees at every, at every step. So be aware of that also. So buying Bitcoin, plenty of places. There's more than I could mention right now. But the ones I wanted to hit on were the things that might be on your phone already, like Cash App and Robinhood. Uh, Strike is a um, is a Bitcoin based uh, purchasing app that you can use. Fold Card that I mentioned on uh, on Friday that um, you earn Bitcoin for purchases. You earn Sats every time you swipe it and things like that. Um, they had a a Bitcoin purchasing option and they still do, but I think it's only state to state right now. Uh, some states are shut down. I'm not sure how many they have um, back in locked in that actually work. Uh, it came down to some SEC things. It came into some of the things that the bank that they were tied into, uh, what was um, different classifications with government trying to do government things and, uh, and, and regulations. It kind of throws sideways some of the practices that are set up. So I know Fold is um, is working hard on that. I don't know if they have it up in uh, in a bunch of states yet, or uh, or how that's going. I haven't tried to purchase it through Fold, but I see that uh, they are still building reward systems around it. So I don't think it's going away anytime soon. It's just a matter of if it's available in your state. I know when we were in Texas, um, I could buy Bitcoin with Fold because of where my address was. Um, but Josh couldn't because of where his address was. So Texas was one of the states that uh, you couldn't buy it. Right now, I don't know the status of that. I haven't checked in it uh, into it because I haven't been interested in buying it through Fold yet. But Fold is another place you can buy it. Um, and then the exchanges, the the easy button, the Coinbase, uh, things like that. And I think Coinbase right now would be one of the few that I would probably send you to if you're new trying to get Bitcoin uh, from fiat. So those are the places, some places you can buy it. Um, some other things, some other things you can do to make your stats stacks bigger. Uh, if your fiat is a, a little short, if you don't feel like uh, taking taking your cash and converting it to Bitcoin, maybe your your spec sex. K Bong says Fold is advertising every day with him now. Yeah, I'm getting emails quite a bit and uh, and pop ups on my ad or on my app too. I'm I'm curious what's going on there. Uh, anyway, anyway, there's a, actually a link to sign up for Fold in the in the video notes. Uh, I think um, links in the video notes today are Fold, Blockstream, Jade, and uh, the Bitcoin Company, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But if you want to earn Bitcoin earn. You can earn Bitcoin. You don't have to spend money on it. You don't have to spend your dollars on it. You, uh, there are plenty of places you can earn it. Am I going, am I saying you're going to earn a million dollars? Probably not. Probably not. Are you going to earn enough to, uh, learn about the lightning network? Are you going to earn enough to put a little away? Are you going to earn enough that could add up to be something later? Are you going to earn enough that when the price of Bitcoin jumps significantly, which I I, I wholeheartedly believe is going to happen? Um, yeah. Yeah, you can. You just got to be willing to make a little bit. It's the old it's the old uh, filling out surveys things online. Did people make a shitload of money that figured out how to do it um, efficiently and fast and, and just roll through it and use the system to to its advantage. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Um, is it going to be something that you're going to do every once in a while here, there, um, tomorrow, yesterday, um, and, and get rich off it? Probably not. If you're diligent and you do things every day and you turn around in a year and say, okay, well, I did it every day for the last year. I wonder how it went. It can turn out to be a significant amount, especially if you look at all these different places I'm going to talk about and gamify them. Look at, um, look at the way they work, maximize how much you can earn. And if you, 
if you really think about it and go through the process and say, how does this work for me? You can, you can stack those stats up. Um, MSU rifle says that, uh, they bought for the first, they bought Bitcoin for the first time a couple months ago. Used Coinbase was pretty straightforward. Coinbase has made it user, very user friendly. Um, and that's great. They sell a lot of cryptos on there. I don't suggest you buy anything but Bitcoin, uh, at this point, but, uh, you, yeah, knock your socks off if you want. Uh, but they've made it pretty user friendly. It takes some time. It's not like you're going to pop on there. It's not going to be like, hey, uh, hey, Hunter, I, I want um, I want to sell you something for Bitcoin. You're like, hold on a second. Let me go to Coinbase and set up an account and do that. Uh, it's, a, it's a process, uh, but straightforward. And they walk you through it. And uh, it's not I think I think they bring it down to a novice level very well to where they're not using a bunch of technical jargon and it just makes sense. Uh, and Hunter says when Satoshi's equal a penny. Could you imagine if a sat was a dollar? Now, this is what I'm talking about. These places are, are paying rewards uh, in Satoshis. A lot of the ones I'm going to mention, um, you get rewards back in Satoshis. So right now, um, Satoshi is, is less than a penny or, or whatever it is at the moment. But uh, we were talking on Friday about Lightning and, and there being 100 million Satoshis in a Bitcoin. And the dollar, the the dollar parity, where uh, or the penny, the penny parity, <coughs> when Bitcoin equals when Bitcoin equals a million dollars, a Satoshi equals a penny. So when you're st when you start stacking pennies, and I I kind of thought about, um, I was thinking about how to relate stacking now and the value going up maybe stacking something that isn't very um isn't very valuable and then later on it becomes valuable and i thought about like when my grandma used to collect wheat pennies and uh kennedy half dollars and all of that and you know when she was throwing those wheat pennies in the jar when she was throwing the the half dollars in the jar when she was selling or throwing those silvers uh the whatever uh, she had the big glass uh, jugs full of coins. They probably weren't that significant then. Um, when the value changed, and I, I feel Bitcoin's going to go way higher than a, a wheat penny. But you got to think, oh, if the wheat penny is worth, you know, a dime now, instead of throwing instead of throwing pennies in that jar, you're throwing dimes. You 10x, you 10x whatever you're putting in there. Um, it turns out to be significant in the end. And I think Bitcoin can easily more than 10x. I think we're we're dealing with a whole different um, a whole different scale of uh, scalability at that point, where um, where your value can go way more than metals or or uh, fiat currency can. But anyway, let's, let's get to where you can earn them, where you can drip those pennies into your into your stack. Um, one of the places I like to earn earn Bitcoin, especially as a content creator, but uh, you can do it uh, even if you're a consumer, is value for value networks. Um, value for value podcast 2.0 value for value podcasting network was one of the first ones that I was turned on to what I was made aware of. But um, things like fountain, fountain.fm is a podcast playing app. They um, they did themselves a big disservice, I think, when they rolled out. They they started giving listeners uh, just a boatload of uh, boatload of satoshis to um, to just listen. Um, I think it really it really masked the the purpose of the app. When things got rolled back, the people that were there because they valued and they valued the ability to reward the podcasters that they like, the content creators that they like, they, they realize that now that they could send micro payments to them, I could send you a penny a minute. I could send you a penny an episode. I could send you a penny uh, every once in a while when I hear something that I like up to is however much you want. But the, uh, the, the value for value network the podcast 2.0 network works to where i can put my podcast up there 
it gives a ability for people to to bring value back when they find value in what I put there. Um, that's by streaming Satoshis to me while they listen. It's by boosting an episode, um, things like that. Now, that's great. We're not all podcasters. We're not all uh, content creators. So why are, why am I why am I bringing this up? On a consumer end, you can also be a creator. When you listen to podcasts on Fountain, specifically, you can make clips of those. You could clip out five seconds, ten seconds, a minute, uh, depending on what uh, what podcast player you use, whether you use the Fountain Premium or the standard. Um, there's different tools that you can use to make these clips. <coughs> Excuse me. When people are making these clips, other people can, if they find value in them, if you go through this podcast and you're like, you clip out a list I made at the end and I said, these are the 10 places you can buy Bitcoin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And you clip that, you put it out there and uh, Corey is looking to buy Bitcoin and she says, okay, uh, she finds that clip on Fountain. She's like, wow, that was really easy. And she can give you value. There's a function in there. There's the capability in there for her her to receive satoshis for making that clip um you can comment on on podcasts and get rewarded it's it's you might think it's insignificant i'll tell you i don't make the most on fountain it's not a heavy income stream by any means but it all stacks up over the years over the months over the weeks it adds up it adds up it adds up um, I've been rolling it into other things, uh, but you can just stack it away. You can just stack it away. You can get yourself a uh, you can get yourself a software wallet. You can get yourself a hardware wallet, and every time it gets to a certain amount, you just send it away. Or you can leave it there and use the value you've earned to show value to other people in that network. Um, that's one way is fountain and value for value systems like that. Podverse uh, is one. There are several, um, they pop up and they go away uh, quite quickly because it's a new, it's kind of the new frontier. But things like um, OnlyFans, but uh, crypto based, the payments are in Satoshis. Um, there was one, I don't think it's active anymore, that was uh, based like Instagram. It was basically an Instagram clone but people could put their, their pictures and videos up for free or they could make them a premium pay to see um, pay to see function where people were using Satoshis to unlock the photo, unlock the video. So it's direct peer to peer. Um, content, uh, K-Bonks is content value for value is getting lots of tractions. Um, <laughs> Pip says he wanted to make nursery rhymes for the nieces that have the 14 word phrase keys. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. You'd be singing it to them for, for months and months and months and years. And they'd be like, I have no idea what this is. And then when uh, old, old gray Pip is on his deathbed, he's going to be like, remember those little nursery rhymes I taught you. That's how you access your fortune. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Anyway, so value for value networks like Fountain. Um, there's other ones out there. They're popping up and down. It's really hard to get a handle. Uh, if anybody's listening to this six months in the future, uh, the possibility of some of the ones, uh, the fly-by-night ones being there are, are here or there. So uh, Fountain is pretty stable. The podcast 2.0 value for value network has a bunch of different players that, that support that functionality. Fountain just happened to be the one I fell into um, that was that made it the process the easiest. Um, Podverse is another player that uh, supports it. And if you go to the podcast podcasting 2.0 network, there's a, a link that says um, devices or app, apps, participating apps, I think is. Uh, and you can find one that works for you, uh, both on the, the creator side and on the consumer side. Um. Another thing is Telegram. Telegram is um, is great. They they have an integrated Lightning wallet, uh, Tipbot. 
it has to be added to the groups that you're in. If you're not, if you're not, if you're in a group that doesn't have it, this isn't going to work. But in my group, in several of the other groups that are related to uh, that, uh, we kind of all interact. We've all added in the the lightning tip bop to where if um, if K Bonk is in my group and someone asks a question and he and he writes an answer. And the person says, holy crap, that just saved me an hour looking on the Googles. Um, it, uh, it really was valuable to me. They can tip them back in, in Satoshis, in value, right in Telegram. Uh, this can go back and forth, and it's, it's an exchange of value. You can, ease, you can load that in with, uh, with Bitcoin you buy somewhere else, or you can just do bring enough value to the conversation to stack it up there and use it to to show value to others. Um, these value for value systems are just fantastic with the, the micro payment functionality of Lightning. So the fact that I can send you five cents with no fees, um, it just it makes this it makes this possible. Uh, like like they were saying in the comments earlier, man, this is all great when uh, when Bitcoin or uh, a Satoshi is under a penny. You got to think when I send you a thousand Satoshis, when I give away 10,000 Satoshis on a Friday or this coming Friday when it's 30,000 Satoshis, man, if, uh, if a Satoshi gets up to a penny, if a Satoshi gets up to a dollar, that's pretty significant. Um, you do have to keep in mind that if, uh, if a Satoshi is worth a dollar, um, we're probably not talking much about dollars anymore. I have to think that um, the paradigm is going to shift the way you're going to have to think about the value of, of a Bitcoin at some point is going to be how many bananas can a Satoshi buy me? Uh, just like you got dollars. Uh, you have to think about it in how much it gets you. We're going to end up having to stop thinking about the price of Bitcoin in dollars and start thinking about the price of Bitcoin in goods. Uh, because we're not going to want to sell it for dollars anymore. It's not going to matter. Um, KBox says once X or Twitter um, integrates value for value lookout. Yeah, um, I don't know when that's going to happen. I know that um, Jack Dorsey says that he could have it done overnight. And Elon knows that he could have ha could have had it done overnight. Um, they're trying to figure out how to make money off it. They're trying to figure out how to stay out of the SEC crosshairs and how to make money off at the same time. So that's, uh, that's I do agree that uh, once people realize that that's a possibility, it, it's going to be, um, it's definitely going to be a game changer, but there's no reason it can't be happening right now. Some other places that you can earn uh, Bitcoin, you can earn Satoshis, um, places like Stacker News. Stacker News is someplace where you can go and, um, and post articles, post comments. Uh, people tip you in 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 satoshis. Um, there's affiliate programs that pay out in Bitcoin. One that I use, actually sponsored today, is Blockstream Jade. Um, any affiliate commissions I make from Jade are paid out in Bitcoin, which is fantastic. Um, <laughs> then things like Sats for Likes. Sats for Likes is a um, is a website that you can use to Use Satoshis to get people to like your um, like your videos, retweet your uh, your tweets, uh, comment on things. There's a, a bunch of different options that you can pay for. But the fact that I can go there and set something up and have people do it and pay them 10, 10 sats, like say 10 sats per retweet, um, that means that somebody's earning those. You can go there as a patron and look at the list and go, okay, all these people want retweets. Uh, I have a Twitter account. <coughs> I click the link, hit retweet, and it drops me however many sats that they offered. You can stack sats. This is like the old filling out surveys to earn dollars, to earn pennies, basically. But stack them up and wait. Stack and wait. Stack and wait. Um, and then, so that's real quick, some places to earn it. Uh, value for value uh, platforms like Fountain, both as a creator or creating things from content that's already there. Uh, Telegram, just be a, it, come to my group and talk about value for value and I'm going to drop you some Satoshis. 
Uh, and then I hope that it goes in waves. It goes in waves in Telegram groups. I see once people start doing it, uh, people really understand it and they participate in it and then it kind of dies off and it, it, it fluctuates up and down. I would really see, really like to build a strong value for value community there where it, uh, it doesn't fade away. Uh, sats for likes, stacker news, things like that. You can search them, uh, ways to earn free Bitcoin. Just search it in Google or DuckDuckGo or whatever you use. Uh, and it'll, it'll pop out a list of these sites that uh, you can actually, uh, earn Bitcoin. Re be sure to look and see how much you have to earn to um, to um, to withdraw it, um, because that can be a sticker there. Uh, just don't waste all your time unless you um, unless you're going to be able to get it out for yourself. Um, yeah, K Bong says don't stack or earn anything but Bitcoin, like Brave Bat Rewards, which is is a closed system. Yes, yes, very good point. And Hunter Hunter says he got 12,580 sats for gas. I'm guessing that is from using Fold. That was another place you can earn Bitcoin is um, is a uh, is Fold, uh, debit cards like that. I think Wally is another one that you can earn uh, up in Canada, ShakePay. There's lots of apps that are coming out and they're going through growing pains. They're going through motions, but uh, check that out. I have a link for Fold in the, in the video description. And then... Um, I really wanted to hit real quick. I got a couple minutes here. Places that you could actually spend Bitcoin to earn more Bitcoin. If you have to spend your Bitcoin, if you want to spend your Bitcoin, say you've uh, say you've been selling stuff for Bitcoin and you want you've been doing it for a purpose. You wanted to buy something. You wanted to buy a hardware wallet, um, but uh, you didn't want to block stream Jade. Who takes Bitcoin to buy uh, to to take their to buy to buy a Jade? You can use Bitcoin. But say there's something you want to buy with your Bitcoin you earned and you can't find it. Um, you can literally spend your Bitcoin at the Bitcoin company is one choice that I've found that I uh, I kind of vetted and it works fine. You can buy gift cards with, with Bitcoin. You can buy gift cards using Satoshis and get rewards back. So if you're going to spend the money, if you're going to spend the Bitcoin that you're stacking, why not get a little bit back? It's like uh, it's like a cashback reward card, but in Bitcoin world, uh, you're using Bitcoin to buy gift cards to spend, to to buy things in fiat. You're never touching the fiat. You're just getting a gift card, usually an e-gift card, um, but you're getting Satoshi's back for using it. Uh, so that's some place you can, if you're spending it, you can still earn some back. Another way that I've found is using that Sats for like. Likes, if you have any sort of online business, you have a social media presence and you can make Bitcoin. Uh, one of the flips that I've used is I use sats for like to promote my Blockstream Jade affiliate links, which then I get rewarded in Bitcoin. Uh, it say these aren't the actual numbers, but say if I can use if I can spend 50 cents to make a, a $10 commission in Bitcoin, I spent 50 cents in Bitcoin to make $10. I don't think spending that is the wrong way to do it. You just have to look at things um, differently. You have to look at the the systems available and see if you can game them to your advantage. Um, oh, Hunter said that's the cost. <laughs> I was like, damn, man, you got a really good spin on full. If you got 12,000 sats back on buying gas, that was the cost of uh, gas. Gotcha. Gotcha for sure. Um, so yeah, so those are some places. So to buy it, uh, start looking at Cash App, Robinhood, Strike, Coinbase. I uh, know you're going to have to do the KYC. Know you're going to have to uh, to to verify your license, all that. Uh, one place I didn't mention that you could buy Bitcoin is peer to peer. Uh, hey Brian, uh, you want to sell me some Bitcoin? Yeah, there's no there's no KYC there. Um, it's hard to find. You got to be able to trust the person. Uh, if you send them if you send them funds and they don't send you your Bitcoin, you're screwed. They have to trust you because if they send you Bitcoin and you don't send them anything, screwed. There's no recourse. Um, be very careful with uh, with peer to peer. There's a lot of people that just want to scam. So just be careful on that. That's why I really didn't make a big deal out of it. Uh, earning that, uh, earning those things on things like value for value networks, podcast, uh, podcast players, telegram, uh, sats for likes, 
fold, uh, lolly, shake pay, um, affiliates that pay out in crypto, stacker news, uh, making comments, things like that, stacking them up, stack those pennies. And then uh, there are, are functions to where you can spend Bitcoin to make Bitcoin if you need to spend your Bitcoin. That's it. That's kind of it, guys. That was my list. Um, if you do have any questions or you struggle with any of these concepts and you'd like to talk about it more, I do offer a 30-minute free free chat uh, where we can discuss your goals uh, with Bitcoin. I might be able to help you out right then in that half an hour. But if it's stuff that you want to learn long term, it's going to take a little bit more time. I can let you know what it's, what it's going to take. Is it going to take another half hour console? Is it going to take an hour? some coaching. I'll lay it out for you, but you have no obligation. Just, uh, just a chat about crypto and uh, maybe get your ans questions answered right then. You can find that at thelotsproject.com. You can sign up any place that you see. You can put your email address in, drop your email address in there. You'll get a calendar link back in your email, sign up for it. I'll reach out before the time, see what you want to talk about. And, uh, and we'll go from there. Uh, we'll chat for half an hour and decide if you want to move forward with anything. No obligation, no cost. And we got to meet each other and uh, and add each other to our value networks. Um, other than that, guys, tomorrow, tomorrow, what are we talking tomorrow? I, uh, I didn't even have it on my list here, but um, let me see real quick. Oh, we're talking boondocking tomorrow. Uh, some things, tips, uh, changes, products, and other uh, essential gear for making boondocking easier. Uh, boondocking, if you don't know, is uh, going uh, camping with no hookups in an RV uh, or in a tent. No electric, no water, no nothing. So that's what we prefer to do. Uh, we're not doing it right now, but I got definitely a list of ideas to help you out if you want to, to take on that adventure. Other than that, if you'd like to participate in those live comments or the live or the live recording of the podcast, you can always join me Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Central on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter. Don't forget tonight on YouTube, 6 Central p.m., 6 p.m. Central time, I will uh, be having lots to talk about with Janelle Jones. She is a solo full-time RVer and the, the owner of an RV club. She's going to be great to talk to. I had a little pre-meeting with her a couple of weeks ago, and it should be a great chat. Join me tonight on YouTube, 6 p.m. Central. If you enjoyed the show, please consider sharing it with others. You can find it a post about it, and along with links to all my social media services I offer and recommended products and companies I'm affiliated with at thelotsproject.com. Be sure to listen on one of your favorite podcasts, 2.0 Value for Value podcast players like Podverse or Fountain.fm. Make it a great day, guys. We will catch up with you tomorrow.